Hey everyone, Father Brian O'Brien, pastor of St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Over these last months, of course, we know uh, the coronavirus has dominated life. Um, but over these last weeks, there has also been um, a major increase in uh, racial conversations, racial tension in our country, largely starting with the death of George Floyd at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer, and then the protests that followed. Um, it's 2020, but back in the year 2018, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops wrote a beautiful little document that at the time didn't really get a whole lot of attention, but is now starting to come out from the shadows uh, to get some attention. And the document is called Open Wide Our Hearts, The Enduring Call to Love, A Pastoral Letter Against Racism. And Father Robert Duck, our associate pastor, and I just wanna take a few minutes of your time, and I hope you'll pass this on to others, just to walk you through this wonderful little document. It's about 35 pages. And it's not the first time the U.S. Catholic bishops have addressed the subject of racism. They've done it several times, back in the 50s, back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, multiple times. Um, and this particular document really rings true, I think, for our time. So I encourage you to print it out. It's called Open Wide Our Hearts. I encourage you to read it. Uh, and we're going to walk you through to make it a little more accessible to you. Okay, so it starts out as everything should start out um, with beautiful scripture. Quoting from the first chapter uh, of the letter of St. John, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called children of God. Each of us, that's our baseline, right? Each of us is a child of God, of whatever race we come from. Uh, first and foremost, we are defined by our relationship with God. Pope Francis says, the salvation which God has wrought and the church joyfully proclaims is for everyone. God has found a way to unite himself to every human being in every age. So when we get into the subject of racism, uh, we realize very quickly that racism is simply unacceptable. If we are children of God, and if God's sal salvific message is for everyone, then racism has no place. But what is racism? The bishops explain. Racism arises either consciously or unconsciously, when a person holds that his or her own race or ethnicity is superior and therefore judges persons of other races or ethnicities as inferior and unworthy of equal regard. Go to Matthew chapter 22, right? Christ's call to love each and every person. But they go deeper to explain a little bit more about what racism is. The bishops say racism occurs because a person ignores the fundamental truth that because all humans share a common origin, they are all brothers and sisters, all equally made in the image and likeness of God. When this truth is ignored, the consequence is prejudice and fear and all too often hatred. Prejudice, fear, and hatred. That's what comes when we see each other, not as brothers and sisters. And so the bishops go on. They say racism comes in many forms. It can be seen in deliberate, sinful acts. In recent times, we have seen bold expressions of racism by groups as well as individuals. The reappearance of symbols of hatred, such as nooses and swastikas in public places, is a tragic indicator of rising racial and ethnic animus. Right? So those are these deliberate, sinful acts. Um, but there's another piece to it. Um, we call it sins of omission. We say at the beginning of the Mass um, that we not only are confessing the sins that we have committed, but also those things that we should have done that we didn't do. We call those sins of omission. They say too often racism comes in the form of sins of omission when individuals, communities, and even churches remain silent and fail to act against racial injustice when it occurs. Okay? Racism can often be found in our hearts and in many cases placed there unwillingly and unknowingly by our upbringing and culture. And so this idea that racism is, is ingrained in us from when we are little, we learn it from those around us, we learn it from our culture, and therefore that racism can then be institutionalized. And we have to be very careful and we wanna be very conscious as we watch to make sure that that doesn't happen. And if it does happen, that it is indeed corrected. And so the bishops go on. There's a whole lot here, and I'm just giving you the real highlights here. 
Um, with the positive changes that arose from the civil rights movement and related civil rights legislation, some may believe that racism is no longer a major affliction in our society. So we have people who would say, nah, it's, it's, it's over, right? We, we solved that problem back in the 60s. But racism, the bishops say, bishops, uh, but racism still profoundly affects our culture and it has no place in the Christian heart. No place in the Christian heart. This evil causes great harm to its victims and it corrupts the souls of those who harbor racist, racist and pre prejudicial thoughts. So it's not only bad for the person experienced the, in the racism, it's bad for the racist. If we have racism, if we are acting unjustly towards another person based on their race, it also hurts us. We gotta be conscious of that. The bishops go on. What is needed and what we are calling for is a genuine conversion of heart. Right? This is the whole gospel message, right? The conversion of heart. In Christ, we can find the strength and the grace necessary to make that journey. Then the bishops go on and they quote a beautiful passage from the Old Testament. It's from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And it says this. You have been told, O mortal, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Only to do justice to love goodness, and to walk humbly with your God. And so then the bishops go on and they lay out those three, to do justice, and what does that mean? To love goodness, what does that mean? And to walk humbly with our God. I just want to take a minute and talk to you about what does it mean to do justice. And then I'll turn it over to Father Robert and he'll take the rest of the way home. To do justice, the bishops say, for a nation to be just, it must be a society that recognizes and respects the legitimate rights of individuals and peoples. These rights precede any society because they flow from the dignity granted to each person as created by God. There are certain rights that are given to us not by the country in which we live, not by our, our elected officials, but certain rights that come to us from God. The right to justice. It goes on. They define justice by saying this, this is the original meaning of justice, where we are, where we are in right relationship with God, with one another, and with the rest of God's creation. That we're in right relationship. So if I think I'm better than you, we are not in right relationship. If you think you're better than me, we are not in right relationship. If I'm sinning on a regular basis, I am not in a right relationship with the Lord, and therefore not with you either. So this conversion of heart that must indeed be brought about. Um, and so we see that. We see that in the scriptures. We see that in our own lives. And so the bishops go on. Too many good and faithful Catholics remain unaware of the connection between institutional racism and the continued erosion of the sanctity of life. Now, as Catholics, um, we are insanely pro-life, right? We love babies. We love children in the womb. We want to see every human life protected. But racism, the bishops say, is also a life issue. So to say I'm against abortion, uh, but I don't really care that much about racism, right, is not to be pro-life. Right? Now, abortion is the primary issue, right? It is the, the greatest violation of the dignity of human life. Um, but racism is in there too. Racism is a serious sin that must be confronted in our church, in our society, and in your heart and in mine. And then finally, from my little part here, the bishops um, explain, try to get into the experiences of three different groups in the United States. And I really urge you to, to read this part especially. Um, they speak to the Native American experience in the United States. And they say this, before Europeans arrived, this land already had many diverse peoples upon it with varying customs, languages, and beliefs. We know this especially in Oklahoma, right? Where Native Americans are everywhere, right? It's a big part of the culture here. But what did those Native Americans and their ancestors, what did they experience? Um, the bishops say that encounter was a harsh and painful reality for your peoples. And there's more there, and I really encourage you to read through it. So the idea that our Native American population um, has been greatly um, affected by the sin of racism. And then it goes into uh, a page or two on the, uh, two pages on the African-American experience. And this again, this is familiar to many of us. 
Um, we've studied it in history, but do we really know the depths of that history of slavery in this country? Now, some people say, well, there's been slavery in every country. Okay, yes, <laughs> yeah, for the most part. That doesn't make it right that it happened here. And so this beautiful section on the African-American experience. And then it goes into the Hispanic experience. Again, something that maybe we know something about, but not something that we have studied necessarily in depth. So they go on to say, many different groups of people have encountered in varying degrees the evil of discrimination, racial prejudice, and oppression that endangers the very fabric of American society. At this time, we would, not be, we would be remiss not to highlight the experience of Hispanics in our country. And it goes on to explain on various issues with our immigration system, some of the racism that our Hispanic brothers and sisters have experienced. And I wanna close my little part here um, with this wonderful line that the bishops wrote. They say, today, uh, many Hispanics are often assumed to be in this country illegally. These attitudes of cultural superiority, indifference, and racism need to be confronted. They are unworthy of any follower of Christ. These racist attitudes are unworthy of any follower of Christ. So, with that, I'll stop my little half, and I'm going to turn it over to Father Robert, uh, who's going to walk you through the rest of the document. But I encourage you to pick this up. It's called Open Wide Our Hearts, The Enduring Call to Love, a pastoral letter against racism came out in 2018, but is especially relevant to us today. Thanks for watching. God bless you.